So we're gonna look at structure of the proteins and then enzymes as a protein and then hormones as a protein. So proteins are made up of carbons, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. We know this, that all organic molecules are made up of carbon and the hydrogen. Then plus oxygen and nitrogen, depending on uh, which uh, organic molecule is that. They also uh, contain elements of sulfur, phosphorus, uh, and iron. So it, it could have, uh, a, a protein molecule could have uh, sulfur, it could have phosphorus, it could have uh, iron, depending on the function it is designated to do. So uh, the, the building blocks of proteins, the monomers, you need to know what are the building blocks of, of proteins. We call them uh, amino acids. Uh, basically, proteins, uh, they have a property that if you change the pH and temperature, they will also change. So if you change, if you put a protein in acidic medium when it's supposed to be in alkaline medium, it will be denatured. It will change the nature. We call it denaturation. If it's supposed to be in a, a, an optimum temperature and then you increase above optimum temperature, then it's going to be still, it's going to change the what? The, the structure. So still we will say that it has been denatured or it has undergone denaturation. Changing the pH and the changing the temperature of, of, of the medium will affect the way how this protein function. High salt concentration will also affect them. Then it means that it needs a specific amount of salt it's supposed to work in properly. If it is an enzyme, it has a specific amount of salt. Above that salt, then it will not work properly. Below that salt, it will not work um, properly. Uh, what are some of the, the uses of proteins? Proteins have uh, different uses. It stores potential energy. It stores energy. When, when the fats have been used up, when the carbohydrates have been used up, then the next uh, source of energy is going to be proteins. And then when you start using the proteins, now you see that the, the person starts to decrease in size, becomes um, like the meat starts to disappear. It means that uh, glu uh, had, um, carbohydrates have been used up, fats have been used up. Now, mm, also source of amino acids, when you eat protein foods, you will get different amino acids. There are some amino acids which are produced inside the body, the others which you obtain from outside. So when you eat proteins, you'll be able to get uh, those amino acids which cannot be synthesized by uh, our body. Provide a structure. As I say that the proteins make up um, the biggest, uh, big percentage of, of, of our cells. The structure of our cells are made up of uh, proteins. Then they provide support since it make up the structure of the cell. Then obviously it, it provides support. Then transport uh, is very important for transportation. For example, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the red substance which is found in the blood. It's the substance which makes the blood to be red. It does not necessarily mean that blood is supposed to be red. You find out insects have blood. Is it red? No, it's not red. So it's the hemoglobin which makes it to be red. So hemoglobin is very important in transporting uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide in the body. So proteins are, um, proteins can be used as a uh, transport, uh, transport mean. Yeah, we say that uh, protein, hormones are examples of proteins. And the hormones are organic uh, chemicals. They are very important in bringing about changes in the body of, of individuals. Yes, and, and, and the plants. So they, they can bring about growth, they can bring about production of milk in ladies, they can bring about change in your appearance, provide protection. Proteins are, have a very important role in protecting uh, us from uh, diseases. Speed up the chemical reaction. Now we are talking about when they speed up chemical reaction, then it means that those are enzymes. So enzymes are very important in speeding up the rate of chemical reaction. And then lastly, allow movement through membranes. You have what's called the globular proteins, which are very important in transmitting or transporting the substances across the membrane. The lack of proteins will cause what you call kwashiorkor, or oh, it can lead to uh, marasmus. How do you test for proteins? Um, 
You can test for proteins if you use the Mironis reagent. If, if it is positive, it's going to be wine red. It means that it's going to be red. It's going to look like wine. That's why it's called the wine red. So it, if it is positive, then uh, it's going to look red. If it's negative, it's going to re, uh, remain uh, white or it's going to be uh, creamy. So it means that if you add Mironis reagent in a sample containing proteins, it's going to turn red. And if you, you add a million reagent in a sample content without proteins, so it's going to look white. That's the meaning. Then burette's test. Burette's test, you use, if burette's test is made up of sodium uh, hydroxide and copper to sulfate. So when you add this burette's test in a sample containing protein, it's going to look uh, violet to uh, purple. So it's going to look purple. It's going to appear purple. And then if it's negative, it's going to remain blue. So if the protein is present, it becomes um, purple. If the protein is absent, it is, it is blue, as long as you use a Buretti's test. But if you use Mironi's test, then uh, it changes to these colors. If you use a Buretti's test, then it changes to these colors. So you have to know which test um, they have what they have uh, used. <laughs>